gentlemen, welcome to Ariel Helwani's MMA Show! Back in your life on this Monday, November 5th, 2018. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ariel Hawani. Welcome back to the program. Hope you had a nice week. Hope you had a nice weekend. It's a very rainy afternoon here in New York City, and I do believe that I have a hole in my left shoe because my socks are soaking wet. Horrible, but it's okay. I'm excited about today's show. We have a lot to discuss with a lot of different people. We're coming off UFC 230, New York City, Madison Square Garden. History was made on two fronts. A, first time the MMA heavyweight championship of the world, because let's be honest, that's what the UFC belt is. First time that the heavyweight title was defended at the Mecca. Ali Frazier, Lewis Holyfield, many other great boxing heavyweights have fought in that building, the world's most famous arena, but never before in MMA has it been done. It was done on Saturday night. Daniel Cormier is still the reigning, defending UFC heavyweight champion. He submits Derek Lewis in the second round via rear naked choke. Also of note that night, oh, and by the way, the other thing was uh, Daniel Cormier is the first man to successfully defend a belt in two different weight classes. How about that? Huge night for the 2018 Fighter of the Year as of right this moment. Something's going to happen in the next two months. But right now, 3-0, three, three finishes, two belts, two different weight classes. Pretty damn good year for the 39-year-old Daniel Cormier. Jacare Souza breaks Chris Wyden's heart in the third round with the knockout. What a performance. What a fight that was. Unbelievable. Israel Adesanya has arrived. He is no longer the future. He is the present. What a win over Derek Brunson. Jared Cannonier taking a fight on two weeks' notice. A lot of fun things happened on Saturday. Of course, it wasn't the stack card that UFC 205 and 217 were, but it was a fun night at MSG. And as always, a lot going on in the world of MMA and combat sports. How about Floyd Mayweather going to Ryzen? We'll talk more about that on the post show with New York Rick, who is back from his six-month-long vacation in, I do believe, Hawaii. And so we'll talk to him about that. We'll talk to him about 2.30, all that and more. That's coming up on the post show. But today on the program, we're talking 2.30. We've got three in-studio guests. We've got a lot of big names stopping by. So let me run down today's lineup, and then we shall get to our first guest of the day. Sajara so Eubanks is going to join us at around 3.40 to talk about her win over Roxanne Matafari. You probably know that she missed weight. She won that fight, but she was probably the one person on this card who could not miss weight. She missed weight. And she heard it from the local crowd. She's a New York fighter, and they booed her, uh, a somewhat polarizing fighter now. But she is someone who seems to be embracing the boos. So that's interesting. She's going to be in studio. We have apparently squashed our beef. Speaking of beefs, a lot of you are probably in the dark when it comes to my relationship these days, my business relationship, if you will, with Ali Abdelaziz. It has been a rough month for us. And so we have decided to have an airing of grievances on this program. I don't think you think this interview is going to go the way you think it's going to go. That's just a hunch. Ali Abdelaziz will be in studio at around 3 o'clock. A lot to talk about with him. Israel Adesanya will be back. The rare double-double. The rare two weeks in a row in-studio visit. It's only been done once before. That was John Kavanaugh before and after 2.05. Adesanya is the second man to do it. He was here last week. Back this week, talk about the win over Derek Brunson. Jared Cannonier will join us at 145. And the champ champ himself, the double champ, Daniel Cormier, will stop by. A man of his word. Tradition is he comes back after his wins. He'll be doing that in around 20 minutes. But first, let's talk to a man who has had an unbelievable month. Head coach over at the American Kickboxing Academy. Last month in Las Vegas, he was there when Khabib Nurmagomedov won. Saturday night, he was there when Daniel Cormier won. What a month, what a year for AKA, what a year for Javier Mendez. He joins us now via the magic of Skype. Hello, Javier. Hello, Ariel. Congratulations on a big night. Congratulations on a big month. Would you say that this is maybe one of the best months of your career? Um, yes. Yes, it definitely, definitely has. If, if you're measuring it by accomplishments, yes, 100%. Two pay-per-views back-to-back -back main event. 
um, you know, historic wins to the biggest fight cards of the year. It's hard to top that, right? Um, yeah, I, I've never seen it done. No, I've never seen it done. Look no. at you. All right, so let's talk about Saturday night first. Cormier wins. It, it, it was fairly one-sided. Were you expecting it to be that one-sided? Um. I wasn't uh, near. I wasn't expecting it because I never, I never do that. I always, always prepare my guys for five rounds, you know. And Derek was to be respected, and we didn't know exactly, you know, how it was going to go. We thought we were going to out wrestle the hell out of him right from the get go, like Dan Henderson style. And uh, so I was confident all the way going into it. Um, but well, let me explain. Let me go back to it how it all started. Okay. Uh, I got the call from Mick Maynard about three weeks out. He said, "Hey, what do you think about uh, Derek Brunson and uh, and uh, DC?" And I said, "Oh, I like the matchup. Yeah, if, yeah, 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 it favors us. Yeah, I like it." He goes, "Okay." He goes, "What do you think about number November 3rd? I went, "Oh," <laughs> I I said, "Uh, well." You know, I guess because you know he's got a, a weaknesses we can expose, but you know what? Let DC let D, DC decide that. If DC's, I'm on board. So now you just got to get DC to be on board. He calls DC. DC says, "Hey, let me let me make sure my hand holds out, and if my hand holds out, I'm good." Uh, next day, uh, DC's hitting the pads with Rosindo Sanchez, and he said he's good to go. So we took the fight. His first sparring session was horrific. We yeah. were like, "It's crazy." Bob and I were going. Oh boy! <laughs> Why was it so get, bad? Uh, his well, he hasn't done anything, right? He's right. just been doing commentating and doing all these other things. His first firing session was was not what we were expecting. Really? And yeah, his second one was was like fifty percent better, and his third one was like we were like, okay, we have it, we have it, no problem. But then his back went out. Yeah, and I want to ask oh. you. I want to ask you about the back in a second, but first, how worried were you about the hand? Clearly, he didn't need it in the fight, but just the fact that he was going in with a, a fairly injured hand. How worried were you? I was worried, but uh, we were hoping our wrestling would would, uh, would would you know dictate what was going on. And if you watch the fight, he didn't use his right hand that much. He was mostly using his left hand for right. fear of that. Okay. So okay, let's talk about the back. He told us on Saturday night about what happened, but what's the story from your perspective? When did you find out, and how concerned were you when you actually saw the state that he was in? Okay. Well, nor normally, uh, DC always goes through some kind of. Something always happens to him. Okay. And, and his back went out about uh, a week and a half ago. And I was like, crap, here we go again. And he could hardly walk, you know. And, you know, so we, you know, he does uh, uh, the hyperbaric chamber where he goes to sleep, you know, la, la, la. And then all of a sudden he comes back the next day. He's feeling pretty good. He's like a freaking Wolverine, you know. Always gets better quicker. So I'm going into the fight thinking, okay, we have it. Everything's perfect. His last sparring session was fantastic. I mean, he did perfect. Everything we needed from him was perfect. Then we're going, you know, we're going to the fights. You know, I'm already going to the fights. And Crazy Bob says to me, hey, I didn't want to tell you, but uh, DC's back went out when he sneezed this morning with the UFC doctors who's with him for hours. And I'm like, my just turned white, you know, I'm like, oh, sh <laughs> You know, then all of a sudden, now I'm worried. It goes, we got to take it easy. We got to make sure we warm them up right. And so here I am always thinking about the warm up, the warm up. Okay. So I had the, the people from the arena turn on the heater, you know, to keep them warm, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but then, you know, all of a sudden, area when he starts doing it, when he starts talking to himself, when he goes, come on, DC, you know, let's go. You know, that's when I knew hey, that everything that I, that I was concerned about went away. Okay. Wow. What what a story that would have been, right? If he'd had to pull out because he sneezed and blew out his back. <laughs> yeah, that would have been horrible. 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 Um, okay, so he wins. Thank God nothing happened with the back. He he looked fairly I mean I mean there, there there were very few moments where it didn't look like he was in total control. Afterwards he talks about Brock. Do you really believe he is sticking to this? He says it's done. March, I'm turning 40. There's a pay-per-view two weeks before my birthday. It's going to be Brock Lesnar. Do you really believe that that will be his retirement fight? I want to believe, you know, and, I, and I'm doing everything I can to, to make that reality. You know, I want him to retire. You know, I want him to retire on top, you know, and he, he has so many other things to do. Ariel, he could join you, you know. Right. There's so many other things that he can do that he's so, so good at. You know, he doesn't need the fight forever. You know, he's 40 years old. He's going to be 40. You know, he has enough money. So, so why not make the big giant payday with Brock and then move on? You know him as well as anyone. You know how competitive he is. Do you really think he can walk away without a third crack at Jones? 
Um, I hope <laughs> that he is. I want to believe he is. I want to believe he is. Why? Why don't you want to see him beat John? Because I don't think he needs to. How come? He don't need to do it anymore. Only if he wants to. He don't need to. Not for his legacy. He doesn't need it. Okay. Well, why do you feel that way? Because to me, there's an asterisk behind that fight and both fights. So as far as I'm concerned, they're, 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 to me, they don't count. To me. Okay. So what do you say to someone who says, okay, you guys are pushing the Brock fight. He's got you know a checkered past as well. Why not just try to go for John in the retirement fight rather than Brock, who's coming off a of suspension too? Prize fighting. Yeah. Prize fight. Yeah. What pays more? <laughs> Brock. Sorry. Yeah. No comparison. Is there anything that Brock does that really concerns you? Like, honestly, it feels to me like this is like the Floyd Connor fight for DC. Biggest name, easiest fight. Uh, to me, he's harder than, 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 than Derek Lewis. You know, he's a better wrestler. We can't right. just can't wrestle him. We, we're going to have to stand with this guy. With yeah. Derek, the plan was to take him down. I, I said to him, Dan Henderson style. I go, why would you want to stand with Dan Henderson when, when he's got the H-bomb, you know? Yeah. I said, take his ass down. I don't want you standing with him. They're, they're stupid. We were all, all the coaches, Rosendo Sanchez, Rudy Mendoza, and, and Bob, Crazy Bob Cook, we were all saying the same thing to him over and over again. Take his ass down. We don't want, we don't want you getting in a far fight. Because he does that. Daniel, yeah. like what he did with Gustafsson, you yeah. know? The first round was perfect, then all of a sudden Gustafsson hits him with the knee. That was it. He didn't give a shit no more. He was going to hit him back, and that was it. No more. Take him down. And we tried to tell him, take him down. He wouldn't do it. He didn't want to do it. He halfway tried. You know, when you know your fighter, you know your fighter. He just wanted to beat up a Gustafsson because he hit him with that knee. Right. It was a beautiful knee. Now, let me ask you about last month because we haven't talked after 229. Habib beats Conor McGregor. Afterwards, you know, the melee ensues. We know about all that and more. What do you want him to do next? If it was up to you, I haven't heard you really weigh in on this. There's a lot of talk about this, that. It seems like Floyd is off the table, thank God, for now. But what do you want him to do next? Thank God for you, but I wanted that fight because I beat one of that fight. Right. That's the biggest prize fight of all. And also, let's face it, okay, I, I just heard it's Japan, yeah. right? Yeah. Japan is always known for doing some sneaky crap. So who knows how real that's going to be? Is it going to be a real fight? What's it going to be? They're not even giving the the what, what the deal is going to be. Is it going to be a real fight or exhibition fight? What is it going to be? We don't know. Japan's known for that. And also, I heard he's getting 100 million. Okay, if he's only getting 100 million, why in the hell is Floyd going to do something for 100 million when he knows goddamn well if he fights someone like Habib, he's going to make three to four? Uh -huh. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. So something's going on. What's going on, I don't know. Is it entertaining for Japan? Great. But I mean, for the mass public over here, they don't know the other guy. So I personally don't think it's a big deal in the U.S., I think it's a big deal in Japan. I think it's huge in Japan. Right. And I think that's probably all they care about. That it's going to be huge over there. So are you saying that you're still holding out hope that his next fight is against Floyd? Uh, no, no, I can't hold out hope on that because <laughs> we, we don't know what's going on. I'm just saying I don't know what's going on with the other one, whether it's right. a real fight or an exhibition. I'm just talking numbers here. Floyd sure. talks 300 million plus, right? So if he's only getting 100 million from what I hear... And I don't see the pay-per-view being high over here. Do you? I don't see it. No, no, because he's not, he's not a well-known name and it's going to be in the middle of the night. But DC has said publicly a few times, look, I love Habib. I don't want to see him fight Floyd. Floyd's going to beat him. He's, he's just a better striker. We all know what he's good at. We all know what Habib's good at. As his striking coach, do you see any scenario in which Habib could actually beat Floyd Mayweather in a boxing match? Well... To be realistic, we, you know, we have a chance, but we have the, the same kind of chance Connor did, which is, you, you figure that one out. Right. We wouldn't fight the same as Connor, but, but we have the same chance. I could tell you this, we'll go 12 rounds. He doesn't stop him. Floyd no. doesn't stop him, no. Okay. No, we go 12 rounds. What? So we have 12 rounds to potentially knock his ass out. <laughs> what about from an MMA perspective, if this suspension isn't too... By the way, what do you think that they're going to give him? What do you think Nevada's going to give him? What do you think he deserves? Uh, I think they're probably going to find him anywhere from two hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars, and probably suspend them from six to eight months. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. They've been pretty harsh in the yeah. in the past with everybody, and because the public was involved in this, and um, I see that as a potential. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I hope they understand that that the man was 
you know, though his buttons were being pressed right from two months out. And I don't know who in the world would have never attacked those guys any sooner. I think anybody else would have attacked sooner with all the attacks that was uh, put on him, you know, from his father to to his religion, to the political. I mean, I mean, he hit every single button and I just wish he wouldn't have. He's such a great fighter. Connor is, and he's such a great marketer that why did he go there? He didn't have to do that. He could have went the other route, got just as much attention, and and not create hate. You know, he created hate, you know, and I, I just wish he wouldn't have done it. He's a great fighter. He's one of the greatest, I feel, and and uh, and I thought he fought a fantastic fight. You know, he came out really smart. I didn't expect him to come out and do what he did. Which is what? He came at us. I thought he was going to do his trade bark, uh, lay back, stay back, and wait to counter us as we're coming in. That's what we were planning for. But when he came in and attacked us, and then, you know, a lot of people are not giving him enough credit, man. The way he defended in the first round, because I know how good Habib is. He defended extremely well, man. He, he took no damage, you know, none at all. And, and it wasn't until he started getting a little tired. And then, of course, that overhand right. You know, and, and I don't think he was ready for, for, for the striking. I don't think he was ready for the striking. I told you guys every single time I do an interview, Habib striking is getting better. Don't sleep on it. And everybody sleeps on his striking yeah. every single time. And look what happens. Uh, Dana White said on Saturday night that he spoke to Connor. Connor wants the rematch. What do you think about that? Do you have any interest in that for your guy? Um, you know, to me, it's whatever the UFC and whatever Habib wants. If that's what Habib wants, then okay. Uh, I don't know. I haven't talked to Habib. Uh, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of him, but it, it's kind of <laughs> hard, you know, the time difference over yeah. there. And, uh, I, you know, hey, if that's what the UFC wants and Habib wants, then I'm in. So you haven't had a discussion with him about what he wants to do next? No, the only discussion I had is he told me, he said, I want, I want, I want Mayweather, coach. I want Mayweather, please. If you people talk to you, push Mayweather. Wow. I go, you really want Mayweather? He goes, yes, coach. I want Mayweather. He goes, if it doesn't happen, okay, but I want him. I said, all right. Okay. All right. You want him. So, hey, whatever that kid wants, he, for whatever reason, uh, he wins, man. Every time he's been in the gym, he tells me, I want to do this. And I'm looking, I'm like, no, Habib, you're crazy. No, no, please, coach, let me do it. Please, please. And he ends up dominating. I'm like, how the frick does he do it? He's so strong. His dad trained him to just be mentally strong. He's stronger than anybody I've ever I've ever felt. And, and look, uh, you know the thing, Ariel, this is how strong he is with his religion, okay? After the fight, you know, he wins the fight, the biggest fight of his career. We're at Ali's house, and he says to me and my friend J Jacob uh, Chavez, he goes, hey, can you guys please excuse me? I have to go pray. Wow. Okay, you give me a break. You you think that you you attacking his religion? That's not going to affect this poor guy. It sure as hell did. Yeah. You know, sure as hell did. And 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 you know, it's like how can you fault him for what he did? No, I don't think anybody in the right mind that understands and who loves their family and their dad that understands that those are the kind of things that that man, some people kill you for that. I remember talking to you when this fight was first announced, and I asked you if you had any concern that he would be too emotional in the fight. Clearly, it, it, it did not affect him. He fought. At his best, he looked phenomenal. But did you have an inkling that if he won the fight, that something might happen? Were you worried all week long that something might happen because how personal this got? I was worried about during. I wasn't thinking about after. So every day I would talk to him, please remember, use everything he's got to go against him. He's going to talk to your father. He's going to talk about politics. He's going to talk religion. I need you to stay calm and stay relaxed. He goes, yes, coach, I'll stay relaxed. Every day, Ari, I was talking to him. And then... When the fight was over, I was out celebrating with, with the people that I know, saying blah, 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 and, and all of a sudden it happened, and then all of a sudden I went, God damn it, why didn't I talk to him about after? Uh -huh. I did not talk to him about after how to act, you know, because I know if I would have done that, put it in his head two months out, after you beat him, be a professional, stay calm, stay relaxed, you know, if the people don't want to see blah, blah, blah. I didn't do that. I did not do that. And then, like a dumbass, I try to get in there. The police tell me stay, stay back. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen what the law says. Nobody beats the law. The mm -hmm. law tells you stay back, stay back. You know. I noticed that he apologized to you. There was a clip of him saying sorry to you afterwards, and you said you don't have to apologize. Did you feel like at any point it it, it got a, it went a little too far? Maybe not even with Habib, but with other members of the team. I know you know Zubaira. You you coach him as well. Like, were you disappointed about anything that happened afterwards? I, I, I was disappointed that Habib jumped the cage. Yes, absolutely. Because regardless, regardless, it's still wrong. You know, mm -hmm. I understand why he did it, but it's still wrong. I can't condone that. I can't say, no, I don't blame him. No, bullshit.
you know, it, it, it was wrong. But but I do understand why. And I'm not in his shoes and I, I'm not religious like he is. But I'll tell you, the only thing that would affect me is family. If someone talks about my family, calls my father a rat, a terrorist and all these kind of things. I don't know. I might have attacked them at the press conference. You know, I probably couldn't say I wouldn't have. I probably would have, you know, and he waited that long, you know, so that that's pretty amazing. What does your gut say right now as far as his next fight? What do you think happens? Who does he fight? Uh, well, you're telling me that Dana wants that? Well, no, Connor, Connor said to Dana. Well, Connor said to Dana. Yeah. Um, you know, to be honest with you, my gut says Dana's the boss. So, you know, we can say, I can say Connor, but Dana can go, no, I want GSP or I want Tony. What do you want? If you had your you way, if they said to you, what do you want? What would you what would you like to see? Do you want the Tony fight? Do you want the GSP fight? What do you want? Do you want the Connor rematch? I, I personally would want the Connor rematch, but but I would like for it to be uh, keep those three items out of it. You know, talk talk anything else because he's such a great marketer and and you know to me Connor's one of the greats and he to I don't care what anybody says he's a great fighter. I've always respected him and I always will respect him. Uh, I just you know if he can just if it does happen just you know say something else. Don't 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 include that stuff. Do you think Zubaira will be cut? Um, I would hope not. I would think that would be a bad mistake because uh, Habib is 100% loyal and he'll give up his whole career. He will give up his whole career for for his friends. That's how he is. He will die for his friends. So if they do that, then then they lost the whole crew, all of them. Wow. You think you think all of them will leave? All of them will leave. It's okay. just the way they are. What What are you hearing about his status right now? Um, I'm hearing that everything is going to work out. We okay. just wait and got to see what the uh, December 10th, the commission uh, meeting is. But I'm hearing that it's all working out. I'm hearing that everybody's looking at everything. They're looking at the videos. They're looking at, that, that it was Connor also, too. Connor struck uh, his cousin when he was on the fans. His cousin was looking to jump over to try to help, and then Connor cold cocked him. You know, in, in Connor's defense, you know, he, he's, you know, he's defending his friends. Right. So for him, it's war. So, you know, but he did start it. You know, he, you know, Habib started by jumping defense, but Connor started next by by punching uh, his cousin. You know, and that's how all this started. So he had he not done anything, no one would have come after him for anything. But he he's just as guilty as Habib is. Wow, what a month for you! Unbelievable. Not bad for a little gym in uh, San Jose, California. Two of the biggest yeah. fights of the year. You got the double champion. You got Habib with the biggest fight of all time. Congratulations, Javier. Really happy for you guys. Enjoy the victories. And what's are, do you have another fight this weekend in Denver? What do you have next? Oh, uh, we have Luis uh, Pena in Denver. That's right. That's right. Bob and, Ross. Then, uh, then uh, Justin Willis is getting making his big debut against Mark Hunt in Australia, and I'm expecting good results on that one. And uh, Dwight Grant is uh, fighting in Milwaukee on December 15th. And uh, and then Ruslan, my other heavyweight from from Russia, he'll be fighting soon. And and uh, Sergey also too, the new one that just signed. He, he's been training with us too. So uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. But there's a lot of uh, good things going. Ends. And the biggest one of all is, hey man, let's get Cain Velasquez going. Come yes, on. where is he? You know, let's where is get he? Going. He's been ready to go. So what's the it's problem? Just a negotiation, negotiations, bro, negotiations. I don't know what's going on. It's negotiations, but he's ready to go. He's hungry. You know, I was working him out in 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 in, uh, in New York in the room. He he's he's pumped, ready to go. He's been ready to go. Do you think so he'll it's just fight? A matter, it's just a matter of people uh, coming together. His lawyer, I mean, his manager with the UFC, and ironing out. But but he's, he's ready healthy. to go. Bro. He's healthy. Yeah. So yeah, let's go. go. What are we waiting for? That that that's the only thing holding it up. All right. You know. It isn't that he doesn't want to fight. It's just a matter of them coming up, hitting the right numbers that they want. I mean, come on, everybody, everybody that I walk when I walk with him, he's attacked everywhere. Yeah, you know, he's you still him. very, very popular. People want, they miss him. They all want to see him back. I want to see him back. You want to see him back. Everybody wants to see him back. You know, so let's get him back. Do you think he fights again? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. He fights. He right. fights. For who? I hope it works out. But but he fights, definitely fights. Okay, wow. This is the chance he might leave. I hope not. I hope they work it out because if he doesn't, if he doesn't get what he wants, he's not fighting. Okay, you know, it's a money the thing. UFC has his contract, you know, so it's a money you know, thing. That's what 
comes. It, it's obviously, yeah, it's yeah. of course, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what the numbers are. They don't tell me. Right. right. And, and you know what? It's probably good that I don't know, anyways. I'm a big <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I, I blurred it out. So it's, it's good that I don't know any of the other particulars. Javier, thank you very much. Congratulations. All the best. We'll talk to you soon. All right, man. There he is, Thanks. Javier Mendez, the head man over at the American Kickboxing Academy in San Jose, California. An interesting nugget there about Cain Velasquez, who was in New York. And that's one of the cool things about AKA, one of the most loyal teams as far as everyone traveling to the events, having their guys back. I mean, Rockhold was supposed to fight on that card, gets injured, and and you would think it was devastating, still shows up, still there to support DC. Kane was there. They all fly in. Josh Thompson I saw on the street as well. So a huge month, huge 30 days for that team with Habib winning on October 6th and Daniel Cormier winning Saturday night. And they've got some big ones. Violent Bob Ross making his return on Saturday at UFC Denver, the UFC's 25th anniversary show. So it never ends in the fight game. And in particular at AK when they have so many fighters there.